Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Lady Gang. I am Becca Tobin here with Jack Fanick and Kelty Knight. Hello. Hey, you guys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. How's everyone doing? Holding on, holding on. I'm fine. Barely hanging on. Well, I actually, can we go? I have something for you, Becca. Okay, all right. Okay. If it has to do with my clicker texting, I can't. I actually can't. Okay. I love how I love how Derek made his own TikTok about it. Also, like also no, no. do the thing. Let me do just, the thing. No, let me let me just say something, okay? This I didn't want to do in this. defense of you. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do this, but I you've been forced to make me do this, okay? Jack Vanek is a clicker texter. No, I'm not. She is because yep. her nails, yep. oh. her nails I was create yep. a natural click. <laughs> She's and a natural. you know what? I have never even met. I haven't even whispered it because you know what? Something she can't help. She wants to have yeah. beautiful long nails, and she wants to be able to be a, a super speed texter. And you know, I sit next yeah. to her in the podcast. I'm like, whatever, do your thing, girl. Make it's it so move. annoying. <laughs> Sorry, Honestly, guys. Honestly, it's <laughs> but it's, isn't it nice? It's nice when it's like an organic click, you know, no, of the nail it's against the, same the glass. Exact sound. It's the same. It's the same exact sound. <laughs> it's just as annoying. I, I like hate it. you both. I'm leaving the podcast. It's time for good week. Yes, it is bad week. Oh no! My my good week is that um, you know I I came for Becca. It went pretty viral, and it was people were writing me. And they're like, "This is the best moment of Lady Gang." Because Becca's flawless, you know what I mean? So it's it flawless, takes a lot to baby. take her down. It's hard to find the flaws. I see. It's hard to I find see. the flaws. I see what you're you know? doing. <laughs> um, so, but we got someone on the on the comment, uh, someone on the video wrote, I will ride or die for Becca till the end. Yes. Clicking texting is quite the soothing noise. It's my version of ASMR. It reminds me of typing on a keyboard and really brings me nostalgic calmness. Speaking of calmness, when I'm sending a ravenous text email, I love having the click on. So people around me know I mean business and I'm not to be messed with. Number three, I don't have a dependent yet, but I do have a business and my clients need to reach me. So when I text them back, I'm too lazy to turn the sound off and then back on. Four, I like it. I will not be shamed. So. You know what? You know what? She brings up a great point that I also hadn't thought of because if you hear that clicking, you're not going to interrupt that person. She's but, busy. Yeah, that's but true. But if there's no sound and you, you can't could be hear, swiping. you could just be on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So you know what? Clicking forever. Click or texting <laughs> forever. I mean, Organic I, or a machine made. I'm anti-clicker, but I guess I'm pro now. So I don't mind the sound that your nails make on the keyboard. I find it quite nice like ASMR too. You know, it is, it's, it is a little ASMR-y. Also, Kelty, you swallow harder than anybody I've ever know. known. Oh, oh my God, so the ghost. I have, I have Kelty chugging annoying Celsius. traits. Kelty chugging Celsius is like something I've never seen before. Never <laughs> in my life. It's like an anaconda <laughs> taking down a rat. Like it is the craziest. I can, I can feel what's going down your throat. Like I can, in my own throat, I'm feeling but it. This is what makes the podcast great because it was so shocking to find a flaw it's we know flaw. i have so depends many who fl- you ask depends <laughs> who you ask you know <laughs> You're absolutely right. okay so my bad week is um this is a couple weeks old but i i have to share it um so i was so excited to host the emmys the live from e red carpet emmys this year and every when you do it on thursday they send you like a little you know instagram reel that they make and it's like you know, here it is and so exciting and you post it and you're like, I'll see you Sunday. I'm fancy. And so I, you know, been very busy. And so I got mine and I posted it. And then I got multiple messages from my old colleagues at Entertainment Tonight being like, Hey, um, do you think they could spell your name right? What? <laughs> so they what? sent me the reel that was like, join E News host Kelty Nye and the Emmys. And it was Kelty N I G H T. In the font on the video. And I just put it up. I didn't even look at it. I was like, well, someone's looked at this and approved it. So it's up. And then I had to go back and be like, hey, guys, do you think you could send this to me again and spell my name right? And that was embarrassing because I am the host of E! News. And, (laughs) um, you know, it's just like whenever I thought, oh, God, my like my 
outfit pictures are just slaying. Like God is like, stay humble, bitch. Nobody mm-hmm. cares about you and nobody knows who you are. You know yeah, whose name was spelled right? Heather McMahon. You know what or, I mean? And she that's a even, hard one. That's she doesn't even one. work. She doesn't even work at E. You know what I mean? She just comes in for these one things. They got mm. her name right. I'm there every day. But anyway, well, live your life. I think it's the universe telling you anytime that you're getting a little too big for your britches, it Katie knocks Knightley. you down a little bit. Katie Knightley. Yep. It's like our name is finally on a marquee and you are really <laughs> f- like you think you are literally famous. And then they're yep. like, no, no, no. We're going <laughs> to. But her first and last name tremendously. <laughs> yeah, because just a few weeks before the Emmys, remember, I was like, oh, Oscar de la Renta and Monique Lillier are dressing me. I've like yeah. really made it. And and then the universe was like, not today, bitch. Kelty Knight with an N. Night, night. Anyway, night, night. who's next? I noticed you didn't um, go with my selection of gowns for the Emmys, Kelty. Yes, I did not. What was your selection? You did the annoying thing where you ask for advice and then you don't take it. Well, actually, to be honest with you, I asked my three... Sorry, Jack. I asked my three most fashionable friends. Wow. Their opinion. Very rude. You, Very don't rude. Have, you don't even have three friends. And the fact that Jack didn't I even know. make it. Who are the other two? My friend Marcella, who okay, like well, buys she's like the, a billionaire. Yeah. Well, she's yeah. also rich. Yeah, she's rich. Okay, so you're three rich friends <laughs> that have designer shit is what you're saying. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, anyway. I'm um, not rich. Is that what you're going to say? Because I'm not. <laughs> no. And um, so, and then I, s- I had to send them both to E to submit them. And E's preference was red. So it was, it was, yeah, I'm going to wear the green. There was this beautiful, very artisanal and, but I'm actually glad I wore the red Becca because it red was a big trend in color. A lot of people wore red. It, it was, looked gorgeous. I had no problem with it. I just yeah, really loved the other one a lot too. I'm going to wear You're, it to something like a premiere or something. Great. Your boobs looked great. They're yeah, smushed they up there. You looked yeah, like you had were, like nice nice tits. Yeah. I had a perfect corset on and then a jelly boob in there. And we tailored the dress. The dress was originally supposed to be like a strap up and I tailored, but it was giving me like super armpit fat. And I hate that Mm -hmm. on TV when you're holding the mic. So, or like not fat, but like, you know, squish. So we moved moved it down. Um, it was very uncomfortable and I thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. I I I was, I I was was happy with her. You looked pretty. You look very red. Thanks. Um, okay. Who's next? I'll go. Okay. So I have been going a long span without Botox. Yeah. I've just gotten lazy, right? I'm just lazy. And who do I see every day? Like moms that I work out with, you know? Yeah. I'm like, I don't have to impress anybody. And Zach barely looks at me. So I'm like, who's even seeing my eye, my forehead yes. wrinkles? I'm seeing, yeah, I'm totally. thinking the same thing. Right. So I'm outside with four and we're playing after school. He's like hitting his little baseball. And then he looks up to luck looks up at me and he goes, Mama, you have a boo-boo. And I was like, What oh, do you no. mean I have a boo-boo? He's like, On your head, you have a boo-boo. And I was like, What? And I open up my phone camera and I look and I'm like, What? And he comes over and he points dead ass on my high wrinkled forehead. <laughs> and <laughs> Ouch. I was like, Oh, yeah. Yep, mommy has a boo boo. Better go <laughs> fix that. Got to go to the doctor's office. But oh. it, it was, it hurt. It hurt because you think yeah. that it's not that big of a thing. Kids will and tell you. And notice. Yeah, well, he did. Ouch. Um, so that I damn Ford st- reading your mom. I still haven't gone to remedy that, which is unfortunate. But I'm going to. Um, and then my good week is that I got our family photos back. <gasps> And I talked about, yeah. And I talked about like the day that we shot them being like a really good day because Ford wasn't a dick. And it was just very out of character for me to take these photos because we really just did it for Christmas presents for our Mm mother-in-laws. Um, and they came back and I, it was a combination of the email that the photographer sent, um, with the photos and the photos themselves. I was sobbing. Oh. It was the sweetest email, like the coolest. She's a mother of four. She's just cool. Whoa. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, listen to this email, okay? 
Your family photos are in all their are your family photos in all their glory. The only rule you aren't allowed to open until y'all are curled up together with your music on and drink in hand. I uh-huh. hope these mean so much today, but I hope they mean more and more each year Ford grows and go off to middle school and college. And you can always look back on these and remember what these early days felt like with all <gasps> the stuffed animals, the wrestling, the hammock cuddling, and him in his happy place at home with y'all. <laughs> That's so sweet. I was like just sobbing because it's so true. Like I'm such a bad document documentarian. What is the word? Documentarian. Yeah, it's all right. Archivist is what we call my I'm, dad. Yeah, and I I make fun of people who are so good at it because it. I I hate being taken out of present moments to do those things, and I hate scheduling things like family photo sessions. It just, to me, felt so, I don't know. I don't, I I can't explain it. Not on the top of my priority list, but it's so crazy that when you do take the time to do this and it doesn't have to be all the time, I'm like, I'm never going to have these moments back. Like these are, and it's just crazy because you just justify it and you're like, I have a hundred pictures of this child on my phone, right? But it's so different. It's Mm -hmm. so different. It's all of us together. Zach hasn't taken a picture of me and Ford since the day Ford was born. Like it is the craziest. Men are so stupid, bad. I like every year on my Instagram, it's like, you want to ask, what what should you ask your husband for for Christmas? A year of taking photos of me with my children. Like people get rage and I do too. If you look through Zach's photos on his phone, not one of me with my child. Oh my God. Sometimes I'll see him sneak one, and you know when it is? It's like the day before Mother's Day. <gasps> <gasps> Shady bitch. <laughs> All right, you Jack, know what, you what should, do you got? Well, Becky, you know what you should do because you are bad at this and you hate doing it, but you yeah. should do it once a year. Like you should do it with the same photographer at like the same time of year and just have that be your thing so at least yep. you have one thing a year. That's I'm going to do that because it's the only way. It's the only yeah. way. So um, cute. Okay. So all right. there you go, Jack. Well, my good week is, okay, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about like things that we won't do or go to. And we were having a whole discussion about New Year's Eve and how shitty it is and staying up that late and like, ugh, I hate it. And one of our lady gangers posted in our Facebook group with a great solution to the New Year's Eve problem. Rachel Den, she said, for Jack and the New Year's Eve dilemma. Mm. Last year, we celebrated an Irish New Year's and that we celebrated at 6 p.m. Central Time when it was midnight in Ireland. And I think I'm going to do that this year. That's a great idea. You can decide any time zone you want if you want a British New Year's, an Irish New Year's, an Australian New Year's. So that is what I'm going to be doing this year because I'm not staying up till midnight. No, that's such a good idea. I know. Why it's the look of the Irish. And then you're it's like, like a happy hour New Year's. You're hammered at 6 p.m. Because that's yes. like the balls dropping. In bed by 8. Yes. Not hung over on New Year's Day. Done. Yeah. Because it's already out of your system. Wow. I want to do this. This is a great yeah, idea. We should do that this year. Great. Uh, um, okay. So my bad week is a fast one. But my first neighbor has seen me in my robe. Now, my robe is really embarrassing. It's from Barefoot Dreams. It's a zip-up robe. It's maxi length. Um, I don't have any shame wearing it in public, but everybody that's with me does. Like, Jared always gets a little bit awkward, and my parents are like, this is embarrassing. It just kind of looks like you've escaped some sort of psych ward. Yes. 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 (laughs) And I also... Or you just had a hysterectomy. Yes. And I also always wear it to Jersey Mike's because I like to take a rinse before I go to... It's like a whole... My whole process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... And now the Jersey Mike's people are starting, my new Jersey Mike's people in Mission Viejo are starting to like recognize me in the robe. (laughs) The robe. They probably think that you wear it every day because they don't realize it's part of a ritual only on Mondays. Yes, I know. (laughs) (laughs) Well, because, you know, I think I've talked about it on our podcast about how like the NPCs in our life, like the the non-player characters, like the characters that we have. And I'm like, I'm somebody's character. Like I'm somebody's character in their world. Like I'm the crazy robe wearing Monday Jersey Mike's goer. (laughs) Like They're like, that girl is so pretty. Do you think she ever gets out of her robe? And, the and then it's is, like, is, is Jared holding me captive? And this right. is like my one outing. It's like, she's are you room. Lacey Peterson peeing <laughs> yeah. outside of that van? 
Yeah, literally. Nobody oh will know, God, but I like again. to maybe like give some people. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I won't go into the diatribe of. Lisa okay, Peterson. when we come back, um, <laughs> that um, podcast about Lisa, the one that that J- that Jack suggested will blow your mind. Okay, that's all <laughs> I, I have told to say. You. <laughs> when we come back, Aaron Foster's back on Lady Gang. <laughs> Our guest today is a writer, producer, actress, and we all fell in love with her during her VH1 show, Barely Famous, Justice for Barely Famous. She's one half of the ultra chic clothing clothing brand favorite daughter and one half of the hilarious podcast, the world's first podcast. She has a brand new show on Netflix called Nobody Wants This, starring Kristen Bell, coming out September 26th. And the last time Erin appeared on Lady Gang was nine years ago. (gasps) Actually, eight years ago. I don't know math. 2016. One of our most favorite episodes of all time. So welcome back to the Lady Gang, the Queen, Erin Foster. A lot has changed. So much has changed. Oh, my God. I need to, like, re-listen to that episode. What was happening in our lives in 2016? We were probably all young and and insufferable. That's what I would have to guess. 100% I was insufferable. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I still am. I still am. But (laughs) always. I love it. So you have huge news. The last time you came, I don't think you were married. I don't think you were a mom. No, and yep. I didn't meet Simon until I, until 2018. Well, this is incredible. Let's start and talk about the show because first of all, getting a show made in Hollywood at this time in life is impossible. The fact that you have a show on Netflix that is actually good and starring radical people is next level. So what are you feeling right now besides like fear, excitement, and a little bit of diarrhea? Yes, all of those things. Um, my producing partner, Ollie, says to me, success feels like you're being beaten to death with your dreams. And I feel like it's a really <laughs> oh. accurate portrayal. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> because it's like, it's just, it's hard. It's not like, oh, it's just easy breezy and everyone's getting along and everything's perfect. It's like, you know, you're constantly making compromises and sacrifices and it's hard and it's amazing. And I just like, I'm trying to, I really and truly try to enjoy like things as they come, whether they're succeeding or failing, because, um, I'm a strong believer that like, if you can't accept the reality of your situation, then you're really setting yourself up to be unhappy. So I try to accept the reality of things, whether it be good or bad. And right now things are good, but like, I'm sure I could find a Reddit thread that would like ruin my day. <laughs> oh, always. We all can. <laughs> yeah. Someone actually, I like open my DMs. I say that because I opened my DMs yesterday. And so, some girl was like, don't worry. I defended you with all the things that they're saying on Reddit. And I was like, <gasps> what? What are they saying? <laughs> I love how it's so vague too that you're like, well, now I got to go look. I got to go to Did the you thread. go look? I almost went and looked and then I was like, why would I like search for something that's going to make me feel like shit? So I was like, no, I'm going to do a press day with people telling me how much they like me. Not going to go on Reddit and find out people that hate me. It's healthy. Wow. You're a stronger woman than us. Stronger <laughs> woman than us. <laughs> I want to, our lady gang actually does love the sort of behind the scenes of Hollywood. And a few years ago, I had made a show on CBS that bombed. Um, But I took everyone for the five years it took me to get it on the air, like along for the journey, the ups and downs. And people were like, whoa, I didn't realize it was like so insane. So I want to know a little bit of backstory on um, Nobody Wants This. Like, when did you write it? When did you submit it? Were there times where it was like happening, not happening? And then like, can you can you really take us inside baseball to like, how do you get a show made? Yes. I'll try not to go too far in the weeds and make it boring. But basically, um, I had an overall deal at 20th, which is Disney now. And part of that deal is that you are writing things for them. And so you have to figure out what you're going to write about. And when I met Simon, I had just finished a pilot called Daddy Issues that I shot that never got made. And so I was fresh off a failure. And when we met, I wasn't actively writing anything else because I didn't know what the next thing was. So then we meet and then I'm like happy. And I completely don't know what to write about because I don't know what's funny about my given situation that I'm in. And I don't know what's funny about my like relationship. And I had always written 
something that was inspired by what I was going through in my life. And it was always this sort of like cynical view on relationships and love. And it was always a character who was self-destructive and self-sabotaging and not a believer. And that was what was working for me. And so when I met Simon and kind of settled into this healthy adult relationship, I was just like, what's funny about this? I don't really know what to write about. <laughs> so I didn't write for like three years. Like I was like, was not writing. And there was a point where my producing partner, Ollie, called me and he was like, what are you doing with your life? I'm confused. Like, I don't know why you're not doing the thing you're supposed to be doing. And I was like, how dare you? I hate you. And you're right. And, (laughs) (laughs) um, and so I was in the process of converting to Judaism and Ollie and I came up with this plan. Like if this would be an interesting show idea and then basically sold the idea to 20th. And then I told Simon, who had been my boyfriend for like two years and never seen me, you know, writing, um, oh, I sold this show about you and I meeting and our families and like them not liking me and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I'm sorry, you did what? (laughs) You can't write about me and you can't write about my family. And like, that's not okay with me. And so then I started panicking and I was like, okay, I just, I did sell the show though. So I need to figure out what to do now because now I'm about to marry like, you know, my perfect person and it completely coincides with my work life. And I really basically wanted the show to go away. Really? I was just like, please. I mean, that's the irony, right? Like Ugh. every show you are desperate to have go, doesn't go. And yeah. then I was like, I just could not and get rid of this show. I couldn't get rid of it. I was like, please just be done with me. Like, I, I don't want to do this. It's going to get me divorced. And so uh, COVID happened, which I use as a really good excuse to like not be writing, even though we all know I had nothing but time to write. <laughs> uh, and there was a point where 20th was like, you got to give us pages. You got to turn this in. Like, where are you? What are you doing? And I talked to Simon and he was like, honestly, you just got to call my parents and tell them that you're doing this. <gasps> you just have to tell them. Cause I'm like, I don't know what they're going to do. And so I called his dad and I was like, I just want to be honest with you. I sold this show. There's an, I, this concept of the show is blah, 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 blah. And he goes, okay, I'm okay with you doing this. Just don't make us look poor. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's easy. Make your rich. No, that's so easy. And he's like, great. He's like, I don't want us to seem like poor immigrants. I was like, okay, cool. Oh my god. And he was like, fully on the on board. And then Simon was like, okay, if my parents don't care, then I don't care. And yeah. then I was like, okay, now I can actually do this and relax. And so <laughs> it was really stressful for a while, and I really was trying to make it go away. And and then um, and then essentially, I, I wrote the pilot, and then we took out the pilot. And we went to um, Hulu and to, I think, FX and Apple, um, and they all passed. And Netflix was our last pitch. (gasps) Wow. Yeah. And I was, like, positive they weren't going to pick it up or, like, they weren't going to buy it. Um, And I honestly was kind of relieved. I was like, this has been a really rough three years. I just need to write about something that has nothing to do with my life now that I'm like a married person and I'm responsible for two people instead of one. So mm-hmm. great. please just pass on it so I can fucking move on with my life. And obviously they, they bought it. And, <laughs> and so here we are, we did it. And then it all worked out. It all, it was just like all the anxiety was up front, you know, have your husband's parents watched it? Like what are their thoughts? They haven't seen feet. it. Although my no. mother-in-law, I, I put like a little Easter egg of her in. Um, she's in like the opening temple scene sitting next to the woman that's playing her. Uh, oh, cute. So, oh, that's, that's cool. Cute. She was really excited. I mean, listen, the truth is there, like, obviously we, you guys all know um, for TV, you always have to just create like built in conflict. And so the parents have to like hate Joanne, but the truth yeah. is parents love me. I'm lovable. I converted to Judaism. It's like the ultimate way to get your in-laws to love you. Um, 
And so they're excited and they're having like a viewing party with all their friends, which is really cute. Oh, that's cute. cute. Wow. And also it's so, we've seen the trailer and then I have some friends who actually work at Netflix who have seen the show Uh and it is unanimous. This is a hit. So it's just so wild that the one thing, because it's also like one thing to get like a show on for a season and have a few people watch it. And then it kind of disappears into nowhere. Like this show is sticking around, it seems. And it's just, isn't it ironic that this is the one thing you weren't fighting for? It's just (laughs) the lesson in life. Yeah, Yeah. it really is. I kind of think anything that gives you a really strong reaction, it's like something, there's something there. You know, yeah. even if it's a negative reaction, I think it means that there's something like sticky to it. Yeah. Um, well, and I'm so f- sick of not seeing romantic comedies outside of Hallmark. Like it's just yeah. such a bummer that, I mean, no shade to Hallmark, but for so many years we have been deprived of like great, funny love stories and we've turned to Hallmark where it's like that might be somebody's bag, but this is just what every millennial woman is so ready to see and it's annoying that it's taken this long to have something like this get made. I yeah. agree. Do you think re- rom-coms are having a big like renaissance right now? Huge. Yeah. Huge. Huge. Your timing is magical. And I think it's like, duh, it's like all these networks, nobody asked us. They were sitting in a room and they were like, what do the women want? And they're like, Godzilla. And I was like, no, (laughs) the women want hot love stories that they can masturbate to later on in their own time. (laughs) That's why you just need women making TV. Thank you, Aaron Foster. Because yes. we know what we want. Yes. And I think like when I was writing the, the Adam Brody character, I was like, you know what? So many men have written female characters the way that they wish women were. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to write a guy character that's who we want to see on TV. Yes. I don't want to see the like toxic asshole that like sees you as a friend and then you like do the right thing and then he sees you in a romantic way and you like finally get chosen by him because Ugh. that's like the relationship we repeat over and over again in our 20s. And we don't need yeah. that. And we don't need to be reminded of it. We don't need to tell the next generation of girls that that's like what love looks like. It shouldn't be this like toxic thing that like fills you up and like ruins your life. But like you get chosen, you know, because it's just a bad message to send. So I, I liked the idea of giving women the like crushable feeling that you really want to have Mm -hmm. with a guy who's a good guy. Yeah. The guy, like the guy you should end up with can also be really crushable and exciting. Yeah. I love that. Now the ultimate flex of Hollywood is when you cast Kristen Bell as yourself. (laughs) Oh, right. Did you just like send her a text and you're like, hey, um, I have this thing or did it like, was there a list of errands or like, how does that work? Because it's like, I'm going to get the most popular hot girl and be like, you're me. Well, the top of my list to play myself was me. Oh. Um, <laughs> and, and they wouldn't let you? Well, so I sold the idea for me to star in it. Oh. <laughs> um, and then when we sold it to Netflix, they were like, that is adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I love that for you. Love that for you. We love that for you, maybe on a smaller network. Um, <laughs> but we are Netflix and we would like to have a hit. And so <sighs> we, we think we could do better, basically. Oh, yeah. my God. Like, cool. Honestly, do better. Like, I actually would love for you to do better because the truth is that by the time we really properly sold the show and we were going to cast the show and everything, I was knocking on 40's door and I was like, I don't need to be in a hair and makeup trailer at 5 a.m. That's not mm-hmm. where I'm at. I'm mm-hmm. not there. I am trying to get pregnant. Mm-hmm. I want to be a mom. And if you can put an A-list star in this role and make this a hit, like, thank you. That's yeah. the dream. You're actually doing me a huge service by letting me get out of my own way and put someone like Kristen in the role and then let me go be a mom. And then I literally got pregnant while we were on, I mean, Got, casually got pregnant after six years of trying and 20 rounds of IVF, but <laughs> it worked finally. It took. 
um, on the writer's strike when we were halfway through the writer's room. So came back from the writer's strike three months pregnant and was pregnant throughout the whole process. And it was just perfect. Wow. That's amazing. That's actually crazy. Um, and I'm sorry, not to make this about me, but since I always make it about me, um, I love that your ego, like that's just, you're a better person because I had a similar situation with my show where I was like, I wrote, I made the show for me to host it. Cause I couldn't get a hosting job. And the network was like, yeah, we don't really want you to host it. And then I like forced my way into co-hosting it. And they got like a man of course, um, to host it. And I could be like the cute girl on the side, side check. but there was actually no reason for me to be there. And so like, I felt really stupid the whole time I was filming and and then like they had me on the side stage and then in edits, it was like, well, we have to keep Kelty in the show because it's her show. And like, but like I was, there was no reason for me to be there. And it actually, I think ruined the show in the end. And so, but I just couldn't get out of my own way. So I love that, like your story of being like, okay, you know what? I, I made this for me. Cause you want, like, you can't, it's so difficult to get a f-ing job in Hollywood unless you create it yourself. Yeah. Um, but then the fact that you were able to step aside, I guess if someone was like, Hey, we're going to have Kristen Bell be you, I would have probably been like excited about it, but. <laughs> well, let me be very clear. I didn't have a choice. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right. 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 So first and foremost, the choice was made for me. I did not step aside. Right. Um, I was, I was politely asked to step aside. Right. Um, but I also do think that, you know, sometimes when we let our ego get in the way, we're thinking so much smaller, like, we're thinking like, oh, I want to be on camera. No, no, no. Take a step back and think bigger. You're either going to not have a show or you're going to have 10 episodes of a show on Netflix starring Kristen Bell. There is yeah. no question, right? If yeah. I wanted to write myself into the show, I could write myself into the show. Like you, 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 you give yourself more power when you step back and you let the process unfold the way that, that it's meant to. And so yeah. I... Um, you know, it's not that I'm like such a good person. I, I <laughs> had no choice. <laughs> had like an opportunity or not an opportunity. But also like as a woman in the entertainment industry, you now have a responsibility to create again, some like to continue to create this kind of content. And if you had put yourself is starring in it, like Mindy Kaling talks about it all the time, how hard that was starring, show running, creating, her show. And it's like, you now have a bigger footprint in Hollywood and you will, because you are going to just, we're going to all force you to continue to do this. Good. I I mean, the truth is, you know, if I'm being honest with myself, I don't want to be an actress. Like that's just not where my passion lies. I I think that, um, I wanted to be an actress in my twenties because I had some idea of what that was going to feel like. But the truth is that whenever I got acting jobs, I didn't really feel like I was good at it. And I didn't really feel like I was living up to my potential. And so I'm much happier, you know, not because I'm some humble person. I want to be like off screen. I'm much happier as an, as a writer because it plays much more to my skill set. And and I don't want to be in a job where that makes me feel old and like ugly and useless and fat. Like, I don't want that job. I don't, I want a job that makes me feel like, oh my God, you're like the prettiest writer I've ever met. It's, it's <laughs> you know? Like it, I don't, I don't want to live that life. I think it's, it's, and also when I watched Kristen as an actress, I saw what a real actress is like, and it's not me. Like, I, and I don't even mean that in a humble way. Like I, did not ever approach something with the type of thoughtfulness and like preparedness that she did. And it made me realize how like not an actress I am. That makes sense. It makes a ton of sense. I want to know about your daily life. So Becca had a clip go extremely viral off this podcast when she was talking about the fact that she has a nanny and people were like, oh my God, finally, because well, you Becca, you can kind of explain the clip, but I want to know who's on Aaron's team. Like I'm watching you. I see your assistant making funny TikToks of you when you're like doing fittings for the clothing line. And then I know you guys expanded to fragrance. And then I know you have this on your plate and you're also a mom. And like, um, you, have, you know, you guys have your podcast. Like I want to know about the team, but Becca, can you talk about this? Like shame of like, you're not allowed to have help. Well, I don't know how you felt when you became a mom, but when I became a mom, I felt like I couldn't admit to having a nanny from literally the moment my child was born. 
But then I also felt like such a fraud by not acknowledging that I had a nanny because I I was just so worried that people were going to come after me for like the privilege that it is to have a nanny. Um, And then I got a really nasty comment made on the clip that went viral from a woman who was like, you know, in the clip, I was justifying it by saying, I wouldn't be able to work if I didn't have a nanny because I don't have family here. My husband doesn't have family here. It's we have to pay somebody to watch our kid or I can't work. And this woman was like, I have four kids and I work and we don't have a nanny. Like if I can do it, you can do it. And I was just like, I can't win. Cause with the amount of women that were like, thank you so much. I follow these influencers who never show the nanny yet. They're flying private all over the world. And yet we never see a woman step in and hold your baby. So you're hiding that from us. So it's this tightrope that I've been on. And now I'm like, I have a nanny and I don't really, I'm not really ashamed anymore. And I try to ignore those other comments. But did you feel like that when your daughter was born? I did definitely feel that way. We had a baby nurse starting um, two weeks after she was born. She came two weeks early. So our baby nurse was like, I'm not available. I'm booked. (laughs) (laughs) I live in New York. So I had, I had um, wondered if I shouldn't get a baby nurse at all because I was like doing this all natural. I did a home birth. I was like embarking on things in a different way. And I was like, maybe I want to co-sleep. Maybe I want to sleep with my baby on my boob and like be like a hippie and everything. Anyway, a lot of moms were like, you're not going to want to do that. And they were right. So I (laughs) have my daughter and I think that really what happens, I mean, I guess it's, maybe it's different for everyone, but for me, what happened when I got help, um, was that you learn a lot from this person, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, there is not this like maternal instinct that kicks in where you know when you're supposed to breastfeed or when you're supposed to pump or when they should wake up. Or if is that cry because she has gas, if she has gas, what do I do about it? Like there's so many questions and it's so overwhelming that for me, it felt like a godsend to have someone there that made you feel like your baby's not going to die and that you're not doing a terrible job and it's just overwhelming. And so you like, it's the job of 10 people being a new mom. And, um, so we had a baby nurse, our baby nurse like was just phenomenal. She finished two days ago oh. and it has been <laughs> really hard. Cause I was going to say, Ugh. and she was like, your baby sleeps through the night. She sleeps seven to seven. You have a perfect baby. You're the luckiest people on earth. Go with God and joy. Well, she lied to us. Okay. Because our baby does not sleep through the night because I've no. been with her for two nights now and she most certainly wakes up. And Simon and I are like, what do we do? I don't know what to do. <laughs> Last night, I put this chick on my boob at 4.30 in the morning because she was crying. And Simon was like, well, now she's going to think she should eat in the night. And I was like, well, that's not going to work. And then, and it's like, I don't even know what I'm doing. But like, Joy seemed to have all the answers. And she took them all with her. She didn't tell me any of her tricks. Uh-oh. And so we have, we have a nanny who just started literally the day before yesterday. I'm doing a press junket in here all day long. I met my baby yesterday. <laughs> and for the first time ever. And so when I hear her crying in the other room and like my boobs are pulsing and I'm in an interview and I don't know how to calm her down, I don't know what to do. No. Like, it's I don't a know shit either. Show. It's a <laughs> shit show. It's a shit show. Yeah. Can you also, your post about your reason for having a home birth, I mean, there are many, but like specifically to your fertility journey, I thought that was really, um, well, it was very honest and it resonated a lot. I had a four year fertility journey. I didn't end up carrying my baby, but when you described why you chose to have your delivery be like this, I was like, that makes so much sense. And I feel like this would resonate for so many women who are currently in the fertility hell. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It was like a weird thing. Like I think, you know, unfortunately IVF is a really uh, big topic because so many women are experiencing it. And, and I do think that that's a negative in the sense that so many of us need so much help getting pregnant. Um, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of different reasons I think that that, that that's happening, but, uh, but it's really hard and there's no way to do it without Western medicine. You know, you can, I mean, you can do holistic things, but you cannot create embryos and all that. You have to do medication. You have to go to, you know, um, get put under and the whole thing. So 
so much of it was just out of my control and or really all of it. And it, there's all these like fake wins. You know, when you tell your friends like, oh, I'm going in for a checkup today to see how many follicles I have. And then they're like, what happened? I'm like, oh my God, there's like six growing together. And it's like, oh my God, let's celebrate. I'm like, no, 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 there's nothing. hold on. That's just one little part of the piece, piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And then two days later, it's like, how'd the doctor go? One jumped ahead. So we're, we have to skip this month. And it's like, you're back down. Okay. Now you're starting over again. You start to want to share less and less with people because, you know, very few people know what the experience is like. Very few people know the right thing to say. They typically say the wrong thing. I don't want you to tell me it's all going to work out. You have no mm -hmm. idea if it's going to work out or not. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to tell me, just adopt a baby. Just stop thinking about it. If you tell me to stop thinking about it, I'll actually Oh, stop my it. God. If you tell me to go on vacation and have margaritas with my husband, I'm going to punch you in the face. Truly, I will punch you in the face. Because what <laughs> you're saying is that there's something I'm doing that's stopping it from happening. Like mm -hmm. it's you, if you were more relaxed, you would get pregnant. If you stopped thinking about it so much, you get, you're stopping it from happening because you want it so badly. And that is a really fucked up thing to say to someone who's 38 years old and wants to start a family. It's just shitty. And so that whole process was so like frustrating and you, you grow so much from it because you have no choice. And so by the time I finally was pregnant and I was going to give birth, I was not trying to make it as hard as possible. I was just like, I want to experience it and I want to feel every part of it. And all the research that I had done was telling me that, you know, when you, when you cut off the pain, you also cut off all of the hormonal connections between you and your baby. So like when you're in labor, your baby is sending signals to you and you're sending signals to the baby and you're flooded with love hormones so that you can survive this thing and not like hate your baby. And when you block yourself from the pain, you do block yourself from those love hormones. And so many women who feel so ashamed, their, their baby is placed on their chest and they feel nothing for them. Mm -hmm. It's because you're on so many drugs. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a fan of drugs. I, nothing I love more than getting put on propofol to go. go oh my God. Best yeah. day my favorite. Life. Literally can't out. wait. All I want is surgery, is necessary surgery for propofol. Literally, I will make up a reason to get surgery. Just Same. To get okay. Mm, it's the greatest. So I'm a fan of drugs. I love, I love them. But I do think in this situation, you do kind of create other problems for yourself when you solve the pain problem because it can be really depressing. And like you really, there's just a natural process your body is meant to go through when you block that process, like anything else, it shows up somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't want it to happen. So, you know, I didn't know what I was signing up for. It's really, really, really painful, you guys. Like, Do you remember it? Do you, do you remember it? Or do you just have like flashes, like a drunken night? Or like, what is the memory like? Kind of like a drunken night. Or it's okay. like, it honestly felt to me like, when you've taken drugs like mushrooms or something and you realize you took too much and mm. you don't like the high you're on and you know you're no. going to be on it for eight hours and it keeps getting no. worse. <laughs> and no. like you keep thinking if I just change my environment, it's going to get better, but it just like gets worse. Oh, God. That's what it was like for me. Like I kept being like, if I get in my shower, it's going to be better. And then I get in there and it'd be better for five minutes. So I'm like, I this so much I want to kill myself. Okay, I think I'm going to get in a different shower. <laughs> okay, I hate that. Now I want to stand in the kitchen. Okay, now I want to lay upside down. Like, like something needs to make this better, and just nothing would make it better until the baby comes out. <laughs> so, Jack, home birth, right? No, I'm like, mm. are you pregnant right now? <laughs> no, 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 no. We're gonna try like next year, but like this okay. is terrifying me. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here like horrified. Thanks for, thanks for coming. I'm sorry. Phone. I'm like, you know what I'm like because I didn't carry my son and I didn't deliver my son. I'm like one of those sober people. I know a girl in LA who's sober because she had a cocaine addiction, but she actually never drank. And so anytime I would have a drink around her, she's like, obviously I can't start drinking now. I'm sober. She's like, tell me what it's like. Tell yeah. me what a hangover is like. Please describe to me exactly. In like detail. that's what I'm like when I'm around a woman who's had a baby. I get it. <laughs> it's embarrassing. I get it. I get it. But I do think it's one of those things that's like, 
the insanity of it, of how like painful and scary and all those things is what makes it such a cool experience. It's yeah. like, you're never going to experience something like that. It's like someone being like, you just have to do ayahuasca. It's going to fucking right. make you think you're going to die, but then you're gonna come out the other side and be yeah. like, I'm a changed person. It's like, I've never done ayahuasca, but I imagine that birth is sort of similar to that. So yeah. Um, Damn. Great. <laughs> Call me if you want to do a home birth, okay? I don't think I do. <laughs> oh my God. She's like, I'll take the two days of depression where yeah, I want to yeah, throw yeah. my baby out the window. I'll take zero connection with my baby. It's fine. <laughs> Pick your poison, you know? Pick yeah. your poison. Well, listen, Aaron, we are such fans of you and have been for an in- entire decade. Um, and we're so happy for you. Love this era for you guys. Uh, the show is out on Netflix by the time, if you're listening to this, your next click is on to Netflix to listen to. It comes out September 26th. Nobody listen wants to this. it, to watch I mean, it, watch. to watch it. Duh. Um, September 26th, nobody wants this. It's, it's so freaking good. And, um, um, we're just so happy for you and way to keep the female boss bitch slash we want to do less, but we're still going to keep doing more vibe going in Hollywood. I'm just trying to be like a stay at home trad wife, but my husband won't let me. Mm, you shit the bed with this one then. Really? Yeah. You're going to be busy, babe. <laughs> going to be, going to be a season. You're going to be writing a season two. You're and like, the pressure is going to be on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Being beaten to death with my dreams again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can Boom. make apple pie when you're 80. Okay. <laughs> Literally, I'm a, I am wrote that down in my bujo as you were saying it because I was like, I need to make a poster for my office. It's like I'm being yeah. beaten to death with my dreams. I feel that so deeply in my soul. Inspo, baby. Um, also, thanks for the favorite daughter clothes. Like they're so cute and everything. The I best. got the little pinstriped um, like shirt, the like vest best. that was had had no top it's like a tube top with the pinstripe pants i wore it on e-news it so and cute. the pants are so good for long legs i love oh, all yeah. the pants they're yeah, the best Sarah they fit perfectly sort of us to make clothes for only tall skinny people because they are underrepresented <laughs> don't even get me started <laughs> we're gonna have well, to I'll pitch you let me thing. pitch you no actually your sister your other sister's shorter so yeah, you guys so do far. you do like show i do appreciate that but i've been pitching Mo- short models on e-commerce for a really long time advocating mostly like it's okay. my it's my activism yeah, I'm <laughs> um, just getting girls well, I think that, um five four <laughs> girls need to be represented too yeah, yeah. <laughs> sabrina carpenter you know five feet yeah, okay feet girl Okay. okay. Um, guys, Congratulations. So- go hug your baby. Go, go, go loosen those uh, breasts and uh, have <laughs> your next interview. No, I meant like, you know, the, I don't know anything about babes. Release. I don't even have a uterus. Okay. Disgusting. Release, release right. the milk. Release yeah. the milk, Aaron, and release the show. Netflix. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, we will. See you next Tuesday. See you See next, next Tuesday. Tuesday.